Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're gonna to be talking about some fantasy romances. I'm a sucker for a good fantasy romance. I think these two whole shelves and another one up there are all fantasy romances because I love them, okay? They are beautiful. I have, I think, two other fantasy romance rec videos that we link down below. And we're gonna be talking about 10 more today. So let's get started. I will say the ones on this list are definitely the less popular. I feel like all of these are more on the underrated side. I'm delving more into fantasy romances that not a lot of people have heard about before. So I'm excited to talk about them. First, I have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. You maybe couldn't tell by the cover, but this is a fantasy romance. Cinnamon in here is a human woman who lives in this fantasy world and she gets roped into helping a demon perform a quest. So the two of them travel across the land to do the quest and everything and they get into hijinks, they banter with each other. The two of them fall in love with each other while they're traveling by the way and so I love traveling romances when it's fantasy specifically because it's just fantastic. I really loved this one. There's amazing side characters, storyline, it's super funny like it's really good the audiobook is also fantastic as well i really recommend it i have a few katie wilde novellas these are fantasy romances that are novella length this one is the stone heart bride by katie wilde this does say it's like number 3.5 and katie wilde's deadland series which are other fantasy romance books by her i think i've recommended a few books in the past in that series however this one can be read as like, like a complete standalone it does not correlate with the other books whatsoever. This is like a 50 page novella about Flora and Brom. Flora is the niece to the king of the land and he's trying to arrange a marriage between Brom and Flora. Brom has been staying in their castle for a few weeks and Flora has been slowly falling for him. She loves talking to him, conversing with him, like she just loves spending time with him, but she's overhearing the conversation that Brom and her uncle are having about like her uncle telling him like, hey, you go marry my niece. And Brom immediately like rejects it. Like, no, he's like, I could never marry her. And Flora gets very sad and upset. But then Flora ends up getting kidnapped by some orcs. And who is going to be there to rescue her from said orcs? I really love the pining in here because there is mutual pining. Okay, there is mutual pining, but you only get really get the like the heroine's perspective when it comes to like the rejected scene. So just like be aware there's another point of view in this one, okay? That we don't, we're not privy to. Um, so there is mutual pining. The certain like courting rituals that go about um, in this book, 10 out of 10, loved them. For trigger warnings in here, you have depictions of barbarian violence. So like swords and axes and stuff. And then there's also threats of like cannibalism. So watch out um but this was like a short sweet fantasy romance novella that like anyone can like quickly dive into another quick katie wilde novella is evil twin this book for me was like a wild ride because i was not expecting the twists and turns going on in this book i was not expecting that at all so if you kind of want to have like your mind blown for a second there pick this one up um this one's about bane and he is not a fan of his twin brother like his twin brother got the throne got so many things because he was born like a few minutes before him they're twins and so he wants to make this elaborate plan to steal the princess that her his brother is destined to marry or going to be marrying so he's gonna plan on like seducing her to ruin her so that she can marry him instead so he can get a kingdom when he marries her because their families are going to force them to get married because he ruined her and all that stuff. But his plan does not follow through in the way that he expected it to. Okay, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> this book has like a worshipping hero, a kick butt heroine, and just like the twists and turns. Fantastic. I really loved Katie Wilde's writing in here. I think like it's very gripping. If you just want a short fantasy romance book to escape into, definitely pick up her novellas because like a bunch of the fantasy romances behind me are thick. Like they are thick and sometimes you're in a fantasy romance mood, but you don't want to read 500 pages. Just pick up one of her novellas. Next, I have Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson. This is the first book in her Terran Soul series. I have been loving the series. There are five books in the series. I've only read up to book three. I still have to read book four and book five, um, but I would just recommend this series as a whole. And don't let the covers of these books fool you. I feel like people don't read C.L. Wilson's books because they're not into the covers, but this fantasy romance is one of the most epic romances I've ever read about ever. It has shifters, it has faded mates, um, it has like magical powers, like it is beautiful. I love it. Every book in the series is surrounding this same couple, them trying to learn about each other, help their world survives certain instances they get torn apart and put back together like it is 
beautiful. So this series is about Rain and Eliseta. Eliseta is a human woman who lives in this human territory in this fantasy world. And she was adopted into her family when she was very young. I think her father ended up finding her as a baby in the woods, like abandoned in the woods, ended up saving her, bringing her back home um, because him and his wife have been struggling to have children for a while. And he thought this was a blessing from the gods. And then shortly after, a few years later, she his wife ends up getting pregnant and so now they have two twin daughters as well anyway she's out one day taking care of her little sisters like they're going and running around doing some stuff and the fae of this world are traveling to the human realm and she is in for a shock when the oldest fae basically almost of all time the most powerful fae oldest fae ever like claims her as his mate when he sees her like okay and she's like what are you talking about like i'm a measly human woman like, I cannot be your fated mate because fated mates are equals in every way possible. She's like, there is no way I am your mate. Like, what is going on? So this first book is about Taryn, like, courting her and trying to convince her, like, they are destined to be together. This one is fantastic. The series just keeps getting better and better and better. And I can't wait to read book four and book five. You need to pick up Seal Wilson, please, if you haven't yet. Like, she is a total craftswoman when it comes to fantasy romance. This world building was fantastic. This was her debut book. Her debut book. It was fantastic. You would never ever realize this is a debut novel. Like, it's so good. I have to mention Ruby Dixon, obviously. A novella shorter one by Ruby is The Half Orcs Maiden Bride. I love this one so much. Okay, so this one's about Yady, Lady, Lady, <laughs> Yolanthe, and she is kind of different compared to the people in her village and her sister specifically. She's kind of an outlier. She considers herself as an outlier. Um, her sisters are very tiny, dainty, beautiful looking, and Yolanthe is kind of the opposite. She's very tall. She claims to be not the most beautiful, she says, and so she is very sad. She's like this girly girl though. On like the inside, she just wants to sew and get married and have kids. Like she wants all those things. And so she's very disappointed because no one wants to marry her. Um, so she is so happy when her father comes home one day and is like, hey, I have a husband for you. We're gonna go to him. And so they travel all the way to this land and she's in for a shock when she realizes that her father set her up to marry an orc. This one was so swoony and cute. Don't like the, the fact that it's about an orc deter you because this orc is so sweet and cuddly. Like he is so, oh, he's so good. Like even when he meets Yolanthe, he realizes like, Oh my gosh, she didn't know I was an orc beforehand. Let me pull her aside, has a conversation with her and it's like, hey, I know your father set up this arrangement, but if you do not want to marry me, you do not have to. Like no hard feelings, it's okay. I realize you weren't privy to this situation. And she's like, you know what? You're very respectful and kind. Like I will give you a shot and they have to go through these marriage rituals. Ruby Dixon and her marriage rituals in these fantasy romance books to die for. To die for. Like she is a craftswoman, craftswoman when it comes to like marriage rituals that like leave you in a puddle, like in a puddle when you <laughs> read them. Like, oh, this one is so good. Next, I have another like orc fantasy romance. This is uh, the Silver Fury series by Lila Fay. The first one being the Orc's Bride. In this fantasy world, there are humans and there are orcs and humans are kind of the inferior race compared to the orcs. Una and Ergen are our two main characters. Ergen is an orc general and Una is like a human servant. One day he sees her serving his men, his like battlemen, and she's kind of not taking their crap. Like they're trying to grope her and stuff like that. And he, she's not taking it at all. So he's very interested and admiring this human woman who's standing up for herself. Um, and he sees her and sees this as the perfect opportunity to get what he wants. So. Ergen is uh, like a general, but there is a person of higher standing than him, which is the emperor of all the orcs. And the emperor really wants Ergen to marry his daughter. He does not like that daughter. Like he hates her. And so he's like, how can I evade the situation without disobeying the emperor? What can I do? He's like, I gotta get married before I'm summoned back to the empire. How about I convince this human woman to marry me instead? Cause I'm actually kind of into her. So um, this is like a traveling romance. They're traveling back to the empire and on the way he's gonna try to convince Una to marry him. However, Una has a few like agendas that are hidden herself. She hates orcs because they killed her entire family. And so she's actually only agreeing to go with Argan on this trek so she can go to the empire and assassinate the emperor. 
but she obviously falls in love with him along the way. Like, come on, yes. <laughs> Next, I have Taken by the Dark Elf King by Charlotte Swan. So this is a trick you into marriage fantasy romance between Elvie and Arcane. So Elvie and Arcane are from different like elf kingdoms. She's from the Light Elves and he's from the Dark Elves and they don't mingle at all with each other. Like they don't really get along. And then like one night, there the the light elves are invited to a ball at the dark elves kingdom and so they they show up arcane wants to marry lv because he has like secret reasons okay he has secret reasons for marrying lv so he tricks her into getting in like a compromising situation with him so they have to get married to each other but those reasons might shift when he ends up actually falling for lv instead like his priority shift <laughs> if you are new to fantasy romance i really recommend picking this one up it was like a short fun quick read and also the second one just came out i read an arc of that one and i really liked it too in one of my previous fantasy romance videos i talked about the kingmaker chronicles by amanda boucher one of my favorite fantasy romance series ever it's sitting right there <laughs> it's just sitting right there like those three books and so the fourth book in that series just came out which is a curse of queens but this one is about an entirely new couple. You've met them in the other books. They were side characters. This is a brother's best friend, like age gap romance. Jocasta is the sister to the hero from the first three books in this series. And Flynn is that guy's best friend too. So for years, these two have been like dancing around each other. Jocasta was very hurt by Flynn years ago because he rejected her because she was too young for him. Um, and so this is years later. It takes place after the main three books. And it's about the two of them finally talking about and going about their feelings. They have to go on a quest together. Like there's a bunch going on in this one. I loved the world building this one. The romance was fantastic. It was like mutual pining for years and very much like friends to lovers. Like, you know, this person inside and out, like they are everything to you. And oh, I love, love that. I also just loved Amanda Bichet's writing style. She's an amazing fantasy romance author. And I just really love, I love Jocasta and Flynn, but I do recommend reading the three main books in the series before you get to this one. The last two books I'm going to mention are two Grace Draven books, but they're not very well known because they're on the shorter side. So the first one I have is In the Darkest Midnight, which is actually book number 2.5 in the Wraith Kings <laughs> series. Um, it takes place in that world, but it's not surrounding Ildicone version like at all. It's about like characters you've never met before. So this one takes place after Eidolon, which is book two in the Red King series. And it's uh, a short fantasy romance centered around Johanna and a talented swordsman that her father hires to train her brother. So Johanna has been ostracized by the human court that she's been living with. And that is because she was born with a purple birthmark on her face and people have ridiculed her, bullied her and ostracized her because of that. Radamar, who is the swordsman in the situation, there is an age gap between the two, he's a little significantly older than her, is the first person to truly be there for her and to like her as a person and be there for her other than her family. Like her family has always stood behind her, has always been there for her and defended her. And so he's the first person other than someone in her family that has been all those things for her. Each chapter like jumps a year. So it takes place like when they first meet, it jumps every year until like the two of them start falling in love. I loved like all the relationships in here, including like the familial aspects, the side characters, but I ultimately loved Jaina and Radamar's romance. Like I thought it was beautiful. Like this man truly showed Jaina, like you can love yourself regardless of what other people think about you. And oh, it was so beautiful. And the last book I'm gonna mention is The King of Hell by Grace Draven, which is her first ever published work. I don't wanna to talk too much about this cause it could like be very spoilery, but our heroine in here is like, I think the handmaiden to a, a human princess. And the human princess is terrified because she is gonna be forced to marry a uh, guy from a kingdom who is known to be like cursed. That's our hero of the story. And the two of them end up getting married, but the the hero of this story, who's already married to this girl's like best friend, is very into our heroine, the handmaiden. And so for years, like they're like pining after each other, even though like they can't be together because he's married. Like they don't want to, like he doesn't oh, want to be married to her, but like, and she doesn't want to be married to him. Like they don't want to be married to each other, but they're in this alliance marriage. Like they have to get married. Yeah, that's all I want to say. Um, this one was a short, quick read. Definitely not my favorite Grace Draven book, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Like it's a Grace Draven book. Um, and it definitely gives hints to what will later become Radiance. And I 
thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 fantasy romance recommendations for you. Please leave me your recommendations in the comment section down below. And if you want even more recommendations, be sure to check out my other two fantasy romance rec videos that'll be linked down below for you. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any sparkle emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.